We're going to install Virtual Smart Zone version 5.1 on ESXi. Some items we need to note prior to the install is we need to download the OVA file from the support portal. Further, it's a good idea to review the Getting Started Guide for Virtual Smart Zone as this will help us navigate the installation process. The installation can be performed via the vSphere client or the vSphere web client. Now, in ESXi version 6.5, there is no longer a vSphere client, only the web client works. Virtual Smart Zone requires VMware ESXi version 5.5 or later, and we have the following hardware requirements, but we're going to follow the AP count range from 1 to 100. So we're going to be performing a high scale installation. We're going to need at least two virtual CPUs, 13 gigs of RAM, and a 100 gigabyte hard disk. Okay. We're in our web client for ESXi. We're going to select the host that we want to deploy our OVF template to, and this is just deploying the OVA files so that we can launch the VM. So we'll right click on the host and we will go to deploy OVF template. Now we are going to browse to the file that we downloaded, select it, click open, and then we will click next. Next, we're going to be given a screen that gives us the details to review of the VM that we're going to deploy. After we click Next, we're going to be given a license agreement. We're going to go ahead and accept that, click Next, and now we can name the VM and start to deploy it. We'll name it VSZ, select the folder, and click Next. We're given the option for the disk format. Again, we want to make sure that this is thin provisioned so that the drive can grow. We'll select the data store that we're going to install it to, and then click on Next. Now it's going to ask us about the networking aspect of it that we want to configure. We'll select the VM network. That's fine. We can review the details once again. Everything looks great, so we're going to click Finish. We're just going to keep an eye on the recent task below. It's initialized the OVF deployment. Now it's deploying the template. So once that's complete, we'll go into the VM settings. Great, our VM's deployed. We're gonna highlight it, and then we're going to click on Edit Virtual Machine Settings. Now this is an OVA file, so all of the host, memory, CPU, hard drive settings should be pre-configured. However, we have network adapters in here that are not required, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those. And once those are removed, we're just gonna verify everything and click on OK. Now we can power the virtual machine up and start the setup process. Once the VM is powered up, we'll right click on the host, go to open console, and this is where we're going to watch the boot messages happen as it boots up. All right, once the bootloader completes, we're going to be met with our initial VSC login screen. We're going to log in with the default credentials of admin. The password is admin. After our initial login, we'll type enable, enter the password of admin once again, and then we'll type setup. Okay, once the setup process initializes, we're given the option to choose Essentials or High Scale. We're going to choose High Scale for this installation. Now, it's going to give us a warning message that we can't change the profile once we've completed this, and that's fine. We're going to select Yes. For the networking piece of it, we're going to select IPv4 only, and we're going to manually set the IP address. The IP address settings we're using is going to be something that's tied to the virtual machine environment that we're installing on. You'll need to verify this on your end as well. Let's just review the IP settings that we use. So the IP address of the controller will be 10.175.5.190 with a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. We're using a gateway on the same subnet of .1, and we've included our DNS servers as well. So it's a little easier on you. I'm going to clip this down so you can see this happen much quicker. But what we're doing with SmartZone now is we're applying our network settings. The network service within SmartZone is going to restart. Then it's going to come back up, as you can see here, ask us to verify the network settings that we've applied and select yes. Then it will allow us to go to the SmartZone GUI and finish the setup process from there. All right, we're at the setup wizard. We can see that we have our cluster settings, our new cluster. We've given the cluster a name, Smart Zone Demo. The controller name is VSC, and the description is VSC. So we'll just click on Next and continue the setup process. All right, we're really close. We've got our admin and our enable password set. We're going to get a confirmation screen just to verify what we've configured. Here, if we need to make any changes, we can go 
back or we can even restore from a config backup now once we click finish the setup process can take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes depending on your environment so we're going to speed this up just so you can see it complete and then we'll see our completed vsz install at the end once it's completed, we're going to click on the link to redirect us to the GUI login. Once we've logged in, you're going to note that the cluster is going to show that it's out of service. This is normal. The services are coming up in the background. It's common with new installs. Once you're logged in, you can wait for that to clear or you can refresh the page. Once you refresh the page, as you can see here, you'll note that the cluster is up and online and it's ready to manage access points. Check the description box below for great resources located on the Ruckus support portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.